Thank you for Patreon now for donating to the Patreon. Hey guys, it's Vandy as well back on Carpet Vanguard Deck Profile. So if you guys enjoyed it, like, comment, subscribe, and let's know what This time we're covering set 13, Claudine for Stoicaea. So Claudine's that one promo grade three. It's like one of the few ones where it came out during the time I was in my burnout thing. So I was like, any deck profile I don't have to do within a reason, I won't do. So that also includes the Stealth Snake that at some point when we get more support for it, I'll probably cover it. But Claudine, I eventually gave a deck to just because Timestamp came Came out and while I didn't like timestamp too much, I liked Claudine, but I had already felt like I missed the deck profile chance for it, especially because I only built up to set 12. And then I saw set 13 deck profile on her from a hems. I I think it's just a hems that there's a number afterwards, I don't remember, but a uh, shout out to that guy, which actually gave me the idea to do a set 13 deck profile and run a very specific two card combo. So let's go get the start, and see what we got because honestly, I thought that deck this deck was good before, and now with set 13, it's even better. So First of the day, we have our starter in Bioroid Youth Rorora. Grids over boost, fat catch, shows escape base, auto run, point for a second, draw a card, standard star, and plus a free draw if you went second. You can technically use any ride line you want, but if you're going to do the ride line I chose, you basically have to make this the starter. That tells you what the rest of the ride line pretty much is. And I do this because the deck wants as many plant tokens as physically possible, and why not use the OG plant token spammers with Roro? I mean, technically speaking, you could use um, Grand Fia's line, though Grand Fia's gets one less plant token. Also, the grade two basically does nothing. Thing. So, uh, yeah, one of Roro in the ride deck, it's nice to have because, um, you know, it. while it, him himself doesn't do anything outside of the free draw if you go second, he does allow you to make the plant tokens if you go into the grade one. So there's that. And then we have our five plant tokens. So grade zero is boost, 5k power, no shield. Yeah, they kind of do not... Well, okay, in the early game, they're like small beat sticks, which is just nice. And then when the late game comes around, trust me, when late game comes around, this deck goes hard. I remember earlier today, actually, like it's 2.33 p.m. on Saturday, October 7th. Tomorrow's a very special day. But um, anyways, behind that, or sorry, not behind that, but before that, like earlier today, I should have had a match against... I, fuck, what was the lyrical deck? It was the... It was the one that binds stuff, Sienna. And, like, straight up in that match, I was like, I have no faith in this deck winning. And we were struggling. And then somehow we overcame adversity together thanks to plant tokens and Claudine. So, uh, yeah, if I have a plant token, slowly but surely, every plant token deck I've come to love just because, like, it always feels like we're overcoming adversity. And that's some of my, one of, some of my favorite feelings of life. And we move on to our triggers. First, we have our over trigger in Source Dragon DD of Blessings, Bless Favor. Grades of a boost, 50k shield, 5k power. Over trigger, and over trigger in your deck. When revealed as a trigger, move that card, draw a card, choose one of you. It gets plus one win for the turn. And if you revealed it during your draft check, activate its additional effect, which you can do draw a card, choose one of you. It gets plus one card for the turn. The whole front row gets plus 10k. And if you're damaged on the same number of cards of your opponents or more, choose a card from your damage zone to heal it. All around pretty solid. For those of you that don't know, Bless Favor is pretty much my favorite over of all time because it's a fucking everything bigger. Like, no matter what, you always will get the draw in a million guaranteed but if you drove check it you get two draws someone gets a million someone gets a crit probably the thing you either gave the million to or the vanguard if the vanguard's going through the entire front row gets plus 10k and then you get a possible heal out of it meaning there's a chance you could just you, you get a heal out either way like all around, Bless Favor is just a very solid over i like seeing it and it doesn't like auto win you the game unless it's like your opponent to have like one to pass it or like over to pass it and they're in a situation where if the attack went through with the extra crit then they die but like Blessed River doesn't auto win you the game it just makes it a lot harder for your opponent to win and I love that and I just love its color scheme I think it's amazing one of Blessed Favor and then we have our normal triggers. First one, three copies of Serene Maiden Lena. Grades of boost, 5k shield, 4k base, continues guard circle. If your opponent's vanguards are uh, grade 3 or greater, she gives 5k shield. So all around pretty solid. She's a 10k shield and she helps increase the hand for guarding power. Weirdly enough, this is the one deck where Lena does not show up consistently. And what I mean by that is like in all the other Stoic decks, I always say like, oh, I, even though she's at 2, if I could swear on my life, Lena's in this deck at 4 because I see her like every time I think about her. Lena, this is the one deck where she doesn't do that in terms of drive checks and damage checks, but but she will consistently show up in my hand at random intervals to the point where I'm starting to question if Lena just has like some psychic bond with me that I'm unaware of. Um, three of Lena though, she is does a nice draw and she does end up helping increase the hand. And trust me, if you actually saw that game with Claudine, because I think that game probably gonna go up off the deck file. If you saw that game versus Sienna, you understand why you want draws in this deck, especially when you play it like I do. And we have three or four fronts in Frenzied Harris. Grades of a boost, 15k shield, 4k power, continues guard circle. If your opponent's vanguards are great, three your guards, 5k shield, so cool, 20k shield. It's nice to have, it helps increase power. The thing I don't understand is in the other decks, I run more crits than I run both of these, and I just run them both at two of And somehow in those decks, I pull these two more than consistently than I pull them in this deck, which has them both at higher copies. But being a front trigger helps increase numbers, especially in the case where you have just a bunch of plant tokens, but you can't kill them for Claudine skill, or your board just doesn't hit good numbers. Frenzied Harris can definitely help increase those numbers and make them 
a lot deadlier. And it's a 20k shield, which can definitely come in handy when you're doing an early game rush like I do. Or what classifies as an early game rush against a deck that kills your rear guards consistently. So, four of Frenzied Harris, a very nice front to have. Now we have four crits inspiring made in Alana. Grades will boost 15k shield, 4k power, critical trigger, auto rear at the end of battle this unit boosted. Put this unit to solve, choose one of your units, it gets 2k for the turn. All around pretty solid, it can help increase units power by 2000, which does nothing in this deck, but A, it's the option is there. And B, it goes to soul, which is the main reason why this is here, because if you open a specific way, you'll run into a soul problem. And what I mean by this, and I keep saying it in all of my decks and uh, basically, it is you draw only the Soul Blasters, which in this deck is very hard to do because that implies you only draw two specific units the entire game, and the rest of them are either PGs or Triggers. But um, that's probably never going to happen, and if it does, then you got really unlucky. But, I mean, A, it gets to go to Soul, and it helps, like, you know, control your um, Soul problems if you run into that situation, which is doubtful, like I said. And it at least gives someone plus 2k, so for Volan, she's nice to have. If you want to change her for, like, a 5k-based Critical Trigger, you can. And that kind of hints to at one of one of the cards in the deck is, but I mean, yeah, four of Alana. And we have four copies of a heal trigger and LG Pixie. Great zone boost, fitting case shield, 5k power, standard heal, and that's about it. It's just a free heal. You can run any heal you want. You can even run the counter heals if you want to, but I prefer the non effect heals because I like the consistent 15k shield over the fluctuating 10 to 25. But again, run whatever heals you want. I just like to run LG Pixie because. And, you know, Lena and LG, or sorry, Lena and Alana kind of fit the theme of plant tokens and Neo Nectar, while these two kind of fit the theme of Zorga, which is Alka Magic, and lo and behold, this deck kind of spams order, so it makes sense for me. Then move on to our grade ones. First, we're on two copies of Citroen San. Grades one boost, 5k shield, 8k base. Auto when placed on the rear guard circle. If you have a grade zero rear guard, soul charge one and choose one of your grade zero rear guards and gets 5k power for the turn. All around pretty solid because he also helps mitigate the soul if you actually run into a soul problem. Again, it's doubtful. The chance of it happening is like one in a million. I'm just continually saying it. So in case you get really unlucky, you know this is not something that happens constantly, or at least to me it doesn't happen constantly, and that the deck does have counter measures if it ends up occurring but being able to help increase soul is great and much that gives a plant token most likely a free 5k is great the thing i love about this deck too is most of it except for claudine doesn't specify you have to have plant tokens meaning it when push comes to shove if you just call down a bunch of triggers you can still proc off a handful of effects so two of citron very good he can give a, a power boost to any grids or most likely will be a plant token though and he gets a soul charge he does it all for free two of I made two copies of Stepping Calyx Salvia. Great on boost, 5k shield, 8k base. Auto when she's placed on the rear guard circle. If you have Vanguard, that's great through your grade. You may call plant token to rear guard circle. Not a mandatory skill. Pretty great though, because she calls a free plant token, which is helpful considering Claw Dying kills three rear guards to get her first effect off, which I hate. I feel like it's too hefty, but I've seen what the deck can do by having to kill that three. I know for a damn fact if it had to kill one less, that deck would be extremely broken. So, um, yeah, being able to just to call a plant token for free and, like, cut down on Claudine's cost is great. And the fact that both these don't have to be placed from hand, they can just be placed from anywhere and it can be by any means, is awesome because that's why I run them out of two of, so we don't have to see them too often. And instead, we can focus on our three copies of Performing Petal Diantha, who is a great one with boost, 5k shield, and 8k base. And it's two skills, the first one being auto when she's placed on the rear guard circle from the hand specifically. If you have a vanguard that's great through your guard, by counter bossing one choose any great throw that's card from your drop zone and call it to rear guard. Most of the time, you call one of these two. You either call Citra and Sun to get a soul charge and free 5k, or you call Salvia to get another token and then use Claudine skill to kill the token, Salvia, and Diantha, of course, to proc off her effect and get triple drive. So all around being able to get a free rear guard is great, and then continuous rear guard during your turn. If you have two or more back row grade or less rear guard, she goes 5k power. Um... Your deck is spamming out plant tokens consistently. There's no way in hell you're not going to have like a 13k base diantha at any point. So all around, she's very nice to have. Again, though, like how Lena and Frenzied Harris somehow show up more consistently in the other decks. Diantha, I I'm really starting to understand that. I think that fourth copy of Diantha that I always ran in all my other decks was really helpful. Because like Diantha shows up a lot less in this one than she normally does. So now finally my ratios are making sense, or if I have less copies of something, it doesn't show up nearly as often compared to, for some reason, it shows up more often than things that four copies. But um, three copies of Diantha are on very solid. She gets rear guard, she gets uh, 13k base, which isn't too big, but I mean, that's kind of the point of the deck, you know, just grow weaker units into bigger units. Aha, kind of get the joke there. Uh, three of Diantha, though.
and move on to our PGs. Four copies of I Knew I Forgot to Change Something. Ignore this. It's supposed to be Custodial Dragon. Or I mean, it can be put in a prevent. They do the same thing, but uh, Custodial Dragon. Great on boost, zero source, okay, base, can change Sentinel. You may have with the four Sentinels in deck. I was put on Guard Circle. Choose one of mutes. It cannot be hit on the battle. And if your hand is true, or cards in it, choose a card from your hand. card. It's standard PG. Now that you special battle, that basically means if this and only one other card is in your hand when you place it on Guard Circle, you don't have to discard one, which is great, because that means you can be as aggressive as you want in the early game, which is like 50 50 because both of because like there's two cards you have that can't proc off till you get to grade three and then you have this one who technically can but you don't really want to play until grade three so most of the deck doesn't you don't do anything till grade three outside of just spam down the plant tokens that you make from the ride deck but um you know, if you do decide to early game rush, or you play this deck as aggressively as I do, meaning on first grade three turn you go all in, then when your opponent counterattacks you, you can draw on PG, give them the middle finger, and off discard anything because you have no little to no other hand cards. So, all around, it's a very solid PG. You can run Custodial Dragon or Planet Prevent because they have that same skill. I just thought it was Custodial Dragon because it came out closer to the time of um, uh, Claudine's release, so take that as you will, so four of. Then we have our last grade one. One of in the ride deck, none in the main deck of my boy, the man, the myth, the legend, Awakening from Slumber, Roroa. So, um, just straight up, out of pure bias, he's here because I do like the Roro line. Also, because he has a sword that I think is really goddamn cool. Those are the only reasons he's here. His skill just happens to be a benefit. Anyways, great on boost, 5k shield, 8k base, all to win place by riding for, um, Bioroid Youth Roroa. Call up to one plant token to back row rear guard circle, back row center rear guard circle. Uh, and then he has glitter that starts fire gillers. Okay, so we can ignore this ability altogether because that still doesn't proc off like it does in the glitter decks. But being able to call down a free plant token to back row center is great because that means the vanguards are. 13k swing so they can't just 15k the vanguard while they're on grade one and expect that to be a hard no pass because now it's a one to pass comparatively then we're just be without him a boost so all around pretty solid and this is why you do run bioroid youth you could again like just use the normal line of grand fia because i think the grade one for grand fia does the exact same thing that the grade one for roro does and then you can just use the roro grade two because the roro grade two doesn't require this but i prefer the all roro line just, just because i can and i will so one of them in the right deck of roro none in the main deck then move on to four copies of the thing that actually gave me the idea from a hems video again shout out to him for um doing this deck profile and that is devouring arms of collapse c so great tune is a 5k shield 10k base i remember when this thing first came out i was like i feel like this thing's gonna be okayish for zorga if you run like the grade two that can get multi-attack for a cb but then i was like now the deck has to compete with order space obviously roaming prism dragons the multi-attacker and then this thing as well like that's four different things you got to compete for space for along with your pgs and triggers but um the thing is though i thought there was one other deck but i couldn't think about it Turns out it was Claudine. So, he has three skills, all of which are continuous rear guard skills. The first one, if you play it in normal order this turn, he gets with 5,000 power. This deck only orders are normal order, so that's an easy 15k. Then, if you replace the rear guard from drop this turn, doesn't matter if it was by order effect, by rear guard effect, this is where Diantha comes in, or who it was for that matter. It can be him, it can be something else. As long as something was placed on rear guard from drop this turn, he gets another 5k, so 20k right there. And then auto rear guard. Oh, not auto rear continues. My bad. Auto rear guard. When he attacks, if it's the fourth battle of that turn or more, he gets an additional five thousand power. So he is all around a twenty-five k swing, which is pretty nice because again, Claudine can allow for multi attack. So in this deck, he does very well because there are multiple ways to call stuff out from drop. You have multiple normal orders, so there's another five k. And this deck will almost always have four attacks. So all around, devouring arms of collapse C is just a free twenty-five k beat stick on the entire board, which is nice to have. And unless you're playing against a deck that like will constantly get rid of your rear guards, such as Sienna, uh, you will pretty much just have a beat stick on board that your opponent's going to have to sometimes just choose to get rid of because if they don't get rid of it, it's going to be the death of them. So, four of Devouring Arms, just a very solid grade two and adds a bunch of pressure that it doesn't need to add, but it does. And then, of course, we transition into our only other grade two in the deck. One of them in the ride deck, none in the main deck because I was no rear guard skill, sadly. And that is the world 3,000 years later, Rorora. Great turn is a 5k shield, 10k base, auto, when placed on the vanguard circle, by retiring one of your rear guards, call to two plant tokens to rear guard circle, and then it has glitter. So all around pretty solid. It doesn't have to kill a plant token rear guard, so you don't have to use the one from Robo skill, but most of the time you will call the plant token to back row center from his skill, and then when you get to your next turn, if it's still alive, you ride to this thing. You kill that back row center one, unless you have better 
retired targets, but you probably don't. And then you typically just call two plant tokens to a column. All around pretty solid because it gets you more rear guard basics and it technically moves rear guards, quote unquote. And it's just nice to make a board out of them, like, you know, where you ride this thing, you create two more, and then you tend to call this thing, and then you maybe play an order that calls some drop because he doesn't have to be a grade three for any of his skill. I mean, I promise you this skill won't go off till you get to grade three, but the others two are kind of 50 50. And like, say, for example, you play the order that calls stuff from drop, he'll immediately be a 20k base that turn because you played an order and you played something that called from drop so you know you just make a big board of b6 with the lowest actually being the vanguard at 10k base so um all around very solid to have as our grade two in the ride deck he's nice this one you can't use the grand fiat grade two for just because the grand fiat grade two only gives you the free discard if you're going into a grand fiat grade three so one of our in the ride deck none in the main deck free plan token spam what's not to think about him then move on to our grade threes we're on three copies in the main deck one copy in the ride deck of our last unit card in the deck but not the last card in the deck Reminiscence Flower Maiden Claudine. Grade 3 turned out Persona 13k base. She has three skills, two of them being Axe, last one being an Auto. Act Vanguard skill once per turn by retiring any three rear guards. Until end of turn, she gets continuous Vanguard. All your plant tokens give a 5k power, and she gets plus one drive. So that three rear guards, like I said, sometimes in this deck is kind of annoying because it feels like you'll just have you have ways to get them back, but you always like lose out on an extra rear guard because of how rear guard spacing works. But at the same time, the entire board of plant tokens plus 5,000 power. And while it may not seem like much, when your entire board is plant tokens, and then you have this mofo backing them up, in probably one of the orders, yeah, it's a lot more annoying than what you think. And she has triple drive on top of that, which is great. There is a way to get her to quad drive, by the way, just saying. And then her other skill is Act Vanguard once per turn by buying an order card from your drop zone called to two plant tokens. So it's cool that she can basically refresh her cost. She either gives you two rear guards to kill for this thing, or how I like to do is I like to kill the rear guards first, then I like to bind the order so I don't end up killing too many plant tokens and I still get the 5k buff out of it. Though then again, like sometimes I'll end up killing a Diantha, which technically is dumber because the diantha would be a 13k compared to the plant tokens 10k but hey it is two free rear guards without having to pay counter boss or soul blast which is great and they're probably getting plus 5k out of it and she has triple drive on top of that and then her last skill is auto vanguard circle when she attacks in anything vanguard or rear guard by soul blasting one you can choose one of your plant tokens and stand it and that unit gets plus 5,000 power to end of the turn and this is where i messed up the first time i used her for every two different order cards in your drop zone and bind zone so i used to think it was for every order card so you you know and that's why i only ran three in the original build and then when i looked at skill again i was like okay so i do have to change this build and that's when a hems video just so happened to go up and i was like hmm maybe i could just do that and i did take some creative liberties of course because i think he was running like one of those of everything i don't remember i just kind of skipped through it but um Anyways, being able to get numbers and restand is great. In this deck, the max you can hit off that is 15. But, I mean, A, it, this deck can also can consistently get 10 at least, so that's nice. But being able to hit 15 and stand a token is great because that probably means that token is going to get plus 20, which is 25k base, which, again, doesn't sound like much, but that's without triggers, persona rides, and, and everything else, really. And, again, she has triple drive, so there's that, like, all around, she's solid. She gets multi-attack. She gets triple drive. In fact, she gets literally everything that I consistently say D has. Like, every grade 3 has one of one of these but then she gets all of them except for get an extra crit like just saying um three in the main deck of cloud one in the ride deck she gets rear guard she gets numbers she gets triple drive possibly quad drive if you play it right and she gets like extra attacks with bigger numbers so what's on to talk about her let me move on to our orders. So this is the card I hinted at earlier with the crit. And that is two copies of... And all of these are two copies, by the way. So this is gonna, probably going to be the time I say it. Two copies of the Grade Zero Normal Order, Bless the Blossoming Buds. I love saying that name. Until end of turn... It, play for free. Until end of turn, all your units with the original power of 5,000 or less get plus 10,000 power in auto rear guard. Unless you attack, hit, you may return this unit to hand. So here's a nice little note. Earlier today, they eroded this. Right before I put this onto the um, deck profile, they eroded this to where it doesn't say all your rear guards get this skill, all your units get this skill. Which is great, meaning you could give it to your vanguard if you chose to make a trigger your vanguard, so you can play it on grade zero. Or, you give all of your plant tokens who are 5k bases free 10,000 power on hit abilities that don't have to go off, on top of the 5k from Claudine on possible possible Persona rides. Two of. Even if you can't use Claudine skill because maybe it'll kill off all your plant tokens and not be worth it unless you want the triple drive, or maybe you just don't have orders to repopulate the plant tokens, this doesn't require plant tokens, meaning worst case scenario, just spawn down a bunch of LG Pixies and or Bless Favor, and you're probably good. 
And then we have, of course, spiritual body condensation. So grade one, normal order, play it by soul blasting one. This is literally the only other card that's soul blasting this deck. And this is where the competing soul problem comes in. Because for some reason, I consistently draw this compared to the other orders. Uh, by soul blasting one, choose a card from your drop zone with a grade equal to or less than your vanguard. Call it to rear guard and it gets with 5k for the turn. Okay, so you're not going to call any of your ride line unless you really need to rush hard. But typically, you call this thing for more numbers. You maybe call back Diantha for more numbers if you can't use her skill. Or you call either of these two for the sake of, you know, getting more resources numbers and etc so um yeah very soft card gets rear guards and happens to proc off two of his four, three skills it's just nice to have easy two of then we have Nectar of Sensationalism, a card I haven't played in forever, and in fact it's just like mainly discard fodder in this deck, but if it gets far enough in the game, it probably will be the reason you win. Uh, grade 2 Normal Order as well. Choose one of your rear guards until end of turn, it gets plus 5,000 power for every 5 cards your drop zone, and if you have, if your drop has 15 or more cards in it, you get plus 1 critical as well. All around pretty solid, because this deck doesn't like hyper deck destruction like um, Zorgo with Hendrina does, but being able to give someone 5k for every 5 cards is great. Especially because you only need 15 to get that extra crit, and typically by third grade three turn, if you get that far, I've consistently hit 15 cards in drop zone. So cool, free 15k and a crit is nice to have, and it does it all for free. So that's cool for pressure, and also it's a good thing to get the restand target from Claudine skill too. Then we have the thing that gives us quad drive, and that is Gather Upon Me, Wandering Souls. Grade 2 normal order by playing it, uh, you can play it by discarding an order card. Thankfully in this deck, compared to Zorga, I somehow hit more orders. Turns out, when you run two copies of more orders, you suddenly draw a lot more orders than Zorga does. Anyways, by choosing one of your vanguards, it gets to drive for the turn. All around pretty solid, because that means we can give Claudine quad drive. Claudine quad drive, that's just an interesting thing to say. But also, it just does it for free. Like, there's no cost to outside of ditching the order in this deck. Tends to get a lot of orders in hand, so that you want to get as many orders into drops as possible that are different names. This is like, does everything for Claudine. It gets her an extra drive, and it gets her more fodder. And the best part is you can play this while you're, while you're on grade 2, to at least give your grade 2 Vanguard twin drive if you don't want to play this while you're on grade 2, or you can't use this properly on grade 2, or you just want to save this for late game. So, two have gathered upon me, you wandering souls. Great for Vanguard drive checks, and just good for Claudine in general, because it gives her fodder. And then we have Command of Death's Restraint, our second to last card. Grade 2, uh, normal order as well. Discard the top card of your deck. You choose a grade, choose, choose a card with grade less than equal to your Vanguard from the drop zone. Call it to rear guard circle it's a unit and put it to your hand if it's a normal order, not name this card. All around pretty solid because it either bounces a, another order back to hand in case you want to use it next turn, which is nice. So, you know, if you have duplicates that won't proc off Claudine's skill, that's even better because, you know, you can recycle them for the following turn. Or you can just get more rear guards out, ahem, ahem, thing that automatically fulfills two of its conditions out of nowhere. Or, you know, you just either of these two. Like, the fact that we have two orders that can proc off two of its skills at once is nice. But, um, yeah, it's basically here to be a free version of Spiritual Body Condensation. Because while Condensation gives numbers, it might compete with the Soul of Claudine. So if you can't afford it for some reason, that's what Death of Strength is for. So, um... Easy, very solid card, and I love using it, and it's a nice tool for me. Also, again, it can recycle other orders. Then we have Prophelic Orange, our last card in the deck. Great through normal order. By counterblasting one, you can call up to two plant tokens to rear guard circle. Cool. It gets us two targets. For Claudine, we call Momo rear guard. We kill them with her skills. She gets the drive check and 5k for all the plant tokens. Then you bind out Orange, which is what I typically do immediately afterwards, just to get two more plant token rear guards. All around, it just works very solid with her, and it doesn't compete too badly with CB, considering literally the only card in this deck that costs CB is Diantha, so you pretty much don't have CB problems. In fact, you only have to pay a total of 5 CB this entire game if you draw all copies of them, as long as you don't bounce back uh, Prophetic Orange with Command of Death for Stank, which is what I like about it. And also, with these two, which I'm now re realizing, like, if less you like if, say for example you do one claudine each one this deck will have enough to use both spiritual body condensation and claudine unless like you open a very specific way and you just don't see persona rides uh, anyways without further ado i'm just gonna hear hope you guys enjoy all this deck is very fun to play like it's very good in terms of resource management unless like you open with the only two cards of that one specific resource like you either open with both counter blasters and that's it at like max copies or you open with both soul blasters at max copies and that's it but otherwise you're pretty much fine like everything does something for free and then you just get a lot of resource out of making a bunch of plant tokens and being the shinobi with claudine and having a giant beast stick in the form of this thing like all around this deck is super fun to play and i love you Using it, and I cannot wait to get more experience with it, and I cannot wait for Claudine to come to English and hopefully get her own ride line one day. So I'm on this one here. I hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, just follow Twitch. I'll see you all in the next one. Don't forget to sign up your vanguards. <laughs>